Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 10 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn Fusion 360 or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. Also, I appreciate you guys who are taking this class. I appreciate it when you order your filament through my affiliate link down in the description. Helps out the channel, helps me out, and just uh, appreciate it when you guys do that. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And today is a very exciting lesson. I am going to teach you how to uh, design and print nuts and bolts in Fusion 360 that will actually print on your 3D printer and will fit properly, okay, and will fit properly. And let me give you a little background on that. Back in the day, if you took my earlier Fusion 360 class, at that time, you could design a nut and a bolt and you just using the standard threads and you could print it and it would fit perfectly, perfectly it would go on and come off silky smooth. It worked perfectly. Then one day doing exactly the same thing and printing on the 3D printer, printing on the same 3D printer with the same settings, the nut would not go on. It would be like it was too tight and you could get it about halfway on and you would have to work it, work it, work it. If you worked on it for 30 minutes, you could kindly, kind of finally get it knocked down to the point that it would fit but it was quite frustrating. And let me give you a little background about that. Back in the day, the threads that were generated by Fusion 360 come to find out they weren't precision standard threads. The shape wasn't exactly right. One of our old machine shop lathe guys somewhere out there made note of that, notified Fusion 360. They corrected their software to make a industry standard shape thread. And guess what? those then didn't print on the 3D printer. So by fixing the problem for the lathe and CNC guys, then it broke it for us 3D printing homeboys, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to fix that. And there's sort of a simple solution, but you need to do this now anytime that you design uh, threads in Fusion 360 to print on a 3D printer. But enough of all of this introductory talk, we need to jump in and we need to start designing. So I will need you to fire up Fusion 360. I will need to get my big head out of your way and I will need to have a little coffee. We're gonna design a quick nut and bolt <clears throat> just to make sure the threads work right. And then I'll give you a homework assignment for a more sophisticated bolt, okay? So this'll be a fun lesson. And man, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I am having a lot of fun, but we're gonna come up here under create. We're going to create a sketch. <clears throat> we sketch in the XY plane, which is the red green plane. We're gonna click. We are gonna come in with a circle and I am going to hover over the origin, click, and then I am going to drag, and then I am going to type in 25 because that will be a diameter of 25 millimeters. I click enter, and I do like to keep my little sketch open here, and I see that that's fully constrained. As I design, I like to make sure I'm keeping my design locked down. So I'm gonna come up, I'm going to get the circle again, hover over the origin, click, release, drag, I'm gonna make this 15 and then enter, boom. Look at that fully designed sketch. We are well on our way. I don't like my dimensions to be inside my bodies, even though they don't do anything, they confuse the drawing. And so I like to keep my dimensions neat and keep the universe in proper working order. Now we're gonna need a construction line. This will be the bolt. We are gonna need a construction line for our nut. Uh, for our nut. So I get line. I select construction, 
hover over the origin click and then I am going to come out here and I am going to make that let's say 30 let's see if that will work well and enter I have myself a construction line now what <clears throat> I want to do is I want to select so I click drag over and select that uh, drawing that I've already done out here I right mouse click and I say move copy and then I come over here I say create a copy because I couldn't move the original one because it's locked down but the copy doesn't have that constraint and so I can bring it out here and I can say enter okay now you can see that <clears throat> you can see that this one is not fully constrained I have dimensions on it I have dimensions on it but it's out here floating in space so we need to constrain that the best way is with a coincident constraint and so you can see the outside circle is already concentrically constrained with this little icon the two circles are constrained together to have the same center point but what I want to do now is I want to take that center point and it is selected and I want to come down here and put it there boom look at that fully constrained uh-huh okay so now we are fully constrained we can finish the sketch I'm gonna start working on the bolt I will come here I will select this I am going to say extrude and I think that I will extrude that 15 like that okay now I kinda wish I'd done the inside first but I didn't so I gotta kinda tilt this so I can see it and then I have to come over here you see you can't see your sketch you gotta click on the little eye to turn your sketch back on and then I have to carefully select that inside area and then I am going to extrude that and I will extrude that let's say 35 something like that enter and that looks good I'm going to hit my home button so I can see that so the bolt has been formed now I need to form the nut well for the nut I just click the outside part I click extrude and then again a good design practice I could just type in 15 and enter but then if I edited the bolt I would have to edit the nut so I'm gonna do a instead of a distant extent type I'm going to say to extrude to object and I'm going to extrude it to the top face here of the bolt and boom there it is I'm gonna click OK now why do I do it that way now because if I edit the bolt height the height of the base of the bolt the nut will follow now comes the moment of truth we need to put some threads on this so we end up with a nut and a bolt and not just a peg and a hole we select it we are going to create a what we are going to create a thread and look at that now I want you to see when we create this thread it is just drawing a picture of the thread on the bolt do we want a picture of the thread or do we actually want threads we actually want threads so we tell it to model the thread to model the thread and now this will actually physically put the threads on our model now I use the default uh, settings here if your defaults are different I am using ISO metric and then it came in at 15 okay well it's just lucky that I chose a I chose a cylinder diameter that is one of the standard sizes that fusion 360 can build threads but this can create a little bit of confusion if I had put in 14.5 on my bolt diameter when I create the threads it changes that cylinder and it changes to it to one of the sizes it can make and so that would change it to 15 if I'd put in 14.5 and then these things M15 by 1.5 6g and right hand those are all okay and so I click okay and boom look at that we have a beautiful a beautiful threaded nut or a threaded bolt okay we got to finish it up over here so this isn't just a hole so I choose that inside face I come over here and I create a thread I create a thread same thing I want to model it we've got the same type the same size and okay now here my friends is the situation if we just printed these out now they would print out beautifully but they wouldn't fit together they would be too tight 
Now, what your intuition would be, would be to go back to your sketch, to go back to your sketch and change this inside diameter instead of to 15 to 14.9. And that way you think it would slip on easier. But the problem is you can't do that. You can't model a thread in Fusion 360 at 14.9 millimeters. You could put it in, but it would change it to 15. And guess what? Your next print would not work any better than your first print, if that makes sense. So it's kind of a really, ah, you know, drive you crazy type of problem, but there is a simple solution. And what I need you to do is I need you to go to like the front, the front view, and I need you to zoom in on these. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to modify the threads on the bolt you don't need to modify the threads on the nut you just need to take the bolt and just pull it in just a tiny amount just pull it in a tiny amount <clears throat> and it will work perfectly <clears throat> but to do that you need to select four different faces okay you need to select four different faces you do that by pointing at the top of a thread and clicking Okay, look at that. I have selected the top of the thread. Now you hold shift down and you click on the edge, the outside edge of the thread. But you've got to be careful. If I click there, I did not select the outside edge. I selected the intersection of the top of the thread with the outside edge and that will not work. So I select, I click off, I select the top of the thread and maybe I'm even going to zoom in some so I can see more clearly. I hold shift down and now make sure that you get the face and look at that. I have the face. Now I need to select the underside of the thread. I have the top, I have the outside edge, I have the underside edge, and now I need to hold shift down again and I need to point over at that inside face and select that. I let loose, I have the top, outside edge, underside edge, and inside edge of that thread selected. Now I need to modify it and I need to modify it by doing an offset face. And I did a bunch of nuts and bolts. And what I found for me, the best was minus 0.1. Why minus? Because you want to suck it in a little bit. Did you see how that popped in a little bit? Everything retracted by a tenth of a millimeter. And I say, okay. Now this, this my friend, is going to fit perfectly into that. All right. And so what I have going here is I am already working on printing this thing out because I had designed it <clears throat> and I had started my print. I had designed it and I had started my print before, uh, before this lesson. And so the print is already going, but you can see it's about to finish the bases. It's about to put the top layer on the bases. Now we could sit here and chit chat for 45 minutes while this thing's finished print printing, or I could pause the video and rejoin you, rejoin you when it is done printing. And also when I rejoin you, I will be giving you your homework assignment. Okay, I will be giving you your homework assignment. Let, but let me get this thing queued up here. And what I am going to do, I am going to pause and freeze the video. I'm back. I interrupt this program because I see Island, Bo Island Boy is wearing an orange shirt today. Let's check on the 3D print. Still not done. It looks like it's getting close to the top level. I'm going to have to pause again, but I didn't want you guys to miss Island Boy because I know, where'd he go? Island Boy disappeared. Anyway, I thought I would stop and show you that. We'll be back in a minute. Freeze. We interrupt this program to bring you the fishermen. The fishermen are out. Actually, I think that is Island Boy and his assistant have successfully disembarked in their fishing boat. You can see they have their nets, so they're getting ready to go out, uh, go out fishing. And as we are waiting for the most excellent 3D print to complete, we will sit and we will chat for a minute as we can see <clears throat> the natives out fishing. I don't know, is it just me or do some of you guys love watching the fishermen? We'll just sit and take it in. They are paddling upstream. It looks like, as is usually the case, there is one guy paddling and one guy sitting, and he is making some progress. That is some pretty stiff current there, and by himself, 
He is making it upstream in a really magnificent way. Wow. Okay, I'll come back later when the print is finished. We're going to freeze. Island girl. Island girl looks like she's out getting, picking vegetables. Yes. Okay, so let's take a look and see where our print is right now. We will come over to this view and you can see that the nut is finished, the base of the bolt is finished, and we are now working on the threads. Let's come back and see how Island Girl is doing. It looks like you can still see her in the white there. She came down, I think she is picking vegetables and perhaps now going back, uh, back up. But actually, I don't think anyone lives on that island. In the morning, I see a large boat taking people there and the island is not owned. The island isn't titled, but I think people go there and basically uh, basically do some, uh, do some farming. But we'll check back in in a minute. I think in the next few minutes, we should have this print finished. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. I will check back with you in a minute. TopTechBoy.com. We are back. Swimmer in the water. Swimmer in the water. Do you see him right there? Man, that guy, I don't know how he got in the river. He must have jumped out of the boat. I think he is swimming towards the island. We can keep our eyes on him. He is swimming towards the island. I see him back there behind the tree. Maybe I should get out of your way a little bit more. We will watch and see if we can see him actually emerge into the island. As we are doing that, we are going to uh, come back over here and we are going to check the status of our 3D print. And we have a most unacceptable focus there. I wonder if I can focus that thing manually. Hold on. Let's see if I can focus that thing manually. Uh, let me see here. Zoom focuses auto, which doesn't work very well. Let's see if we can. I think that is much better. Okay, it looks like it is putting the top layer on the print now. We will come back and check out on the swimmer who, uh, oh, and we have a bonus fisherman going upstream over there. And we'll just try to keep our eyes on the uh, island to see if he actually makes it to the island. I don't see him behind the trees anymore. So maybe he's going to come out and we'll see him. Oh, and we've got the island boy up at the top. We have a lot. I think that was the guy in the boat earlier, right? With the orange shirt. Man, we got a lot of action out there today, don't we? We are at 99% on the print. Let's come over here and see if we can see that thing finish. Shazam, it is finished. Okay, so now a more prepared person would have something official to, and you can see I didn't get, I almost didn't have that first layer adhere. I saw that happening, but I thought I would risk it. And it looks like my risk paid off. Uh, so I don't have something good to knock that off with. So I will use the iPhone 13 here and see if that will work. Boom. Got it. Okay. Let's look at this one. Boom. Got it. Okay. Now, the moment of truth. Will this fit? Okay. Will this fit? We come up here. I get it started. Smooth as silk, uh-huh. Yeah, it is just going right on, and I really like it. It is a tad bit snug, just a tad bit snug, but the second time it will be, it will be just absolutely perfect. Look at that, a perfect fit, a perfect fit. I think Island Boy came out of the water. There he is right there. I don't know where he swam from, I don't know why he wasn't in the boat, but he just went back into the water. So I don't know if this is recreational swimming or if this is survival swimming, but I do find it fascinating seeing the indigenous people as they go about their day. All right, I put it on the other way and just look at that. This time it is going on perfectly and that makes me very happy. That makes me very happy. I think it is time for us to talk about the homework. Okay, so I showed you how to make the threads. Now, if you think of this nut and bolt, though, what is not so great about it? 
What is not so great about it, it would be kind of hard to find a round wrench to use on it. And so we know, uh, we know that real, we know that real nuts and bolts don't have round centers, don't have round bases, they have hex bases. And so what your homework assignment is, is first of all, on your printer using the simple design that we developed, there he goes, look at him, man. That man is swimming upstream. I'll tell you. I think he's a contender. I think he could make it in the in the Olympics. And we have Island Girl. We have Island Girl. One more. Man, this is like the greatest uh, the greatest program ever. Okay, but uh, what your assignment is is for your there's two assignments for your printer. Figure out what that perfect setting is for offsets. You might try different ones and kind of dial in for your printer what makes very perfectly fitting nuts and bolts. And you see there's no play in this. It's very tight, but it goes on easy and it comes off easy. But now your homework assignment is to challenge you on your design skills to do, and I will show you my solution to the, oh, tour boat, tour boat. Look at that. Let me get out of your way. Man, things are hopping today. Things are hopping. There it goes. Okay. That is just pretty slick. I want to get me one of those boats. I really, really, really want to get me one of those boats. Okay. And there goes Island Girl back up the back up the hill. Okay, so here is your homework assignment. I want you to make a hex-based nut and bolt. And the hard part was today, but to do this, you're probably going to have to expand your design skills a little bit. So let me come over here. And this is what I want you to design a hex based nut and bolt. I'll say a couple of things at a minimum. The minimum assignment is you make a hex based nut and bolt. You show me that your sketches are fully constrained and then you print it out and you show that it works. You post your solution to YouTube, put a link back to this video, leave, leave a comment down below over to your video so that we can go look at it. I look at every single homework solution that you guys do. Now, the minimum is that you have a hex based nut and bolt. Okay. Now, what you also know is, is that, uh, Nuts and bolts have little rounded features that make it easier for the wrench to fit on them. And you can see that I modeled them quite elegantly. Now you ought to try to do as good as I did, but if you can't figure it out, I will show you the solution in, uh, in the next lesson. You can just do square, square flat edges if that's all you can do. But you guys that are a little more advanced. See if you can get to where I got. And there is a simpler solution that's not quite as elegant as the one one that I did, but I want to see you guys can go in and design something on your own. Okay, man, I hope you all are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. If you enjoyed the lesson, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Also leave a comment in the comment selection because thumbs ups and comments help me with the old YouTube juice. And when I get more YouTube juice, more people will be exposed to this video. And that's an important thing because the world needs more people coding and doing engineering and doing 3D printing and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.